Okay, so this little uh, webinar that we get together we have is from our UK Amazon group and we're looking at really how to use Canva to uh, make your own images for Amazon listings. Now we've, um, I tend to, I haven't used a designer yet, um, I've enjoyed um, getting images and making them myself uh, using Canva. Um, as Jay talks about in the lecture, I'll put a little link in the chat bar here, but if you want a link to Jay's lecture, let me know and I'll, I'll send it over to you. But he does a little 15-minute um, webinar about using Canva. And it's really useful, good overview, probably better than I can do today, but um, we thought we'd have a little look at it. We've got a few, a few members of uh, UK Amazon group in here, and we're gonna look at a few things like how to use Canva, and also how to remove background images from your pictures, and also how to convert JPEG and other image formats to .ai, which is Adobe Illustrator, which you can buy, you might have it, but if you don't have it, it's quite expensive, but you can convert your images to .ai to help you with, um, well, when you send it to China, for example, logos on products or labels, they do require a .ai um, format for a file. file. Now, Images are really important. As Jay talks about, images and listing description are the two main bits that are important for helping us to get good um, conversion, to get people into our shop and then convert them to good sales. So he talks about having a hero image, which is like the main image, the front image of your product, very clean, very white, very minimalist. Um, Amazon don't like you to have any kind of wording on the hero image. They don't like you to have any kind of logos. They want it very clear. I think they want about 80% of the photograph, the picture, is actually the product itself. They're quite clear on that. And you will get, at times, you will get your images um, taken off or stopped if they feel that doesn't meet their requirements. And I've had it a few times where I've had an image up for maybe a month, and then suddenly, suddenly they've, they, uh, they just take it down bit of a pain but you kind of refresh it put it you know make some tweaks put it back up there and hopefully it'll get um, get past he also talks about different images like the lifestyle image which is about showing you how to use the product so it's really demonstrating to the, the customer uh, how the how the product can be used you've got information images uh, measurements sizes um, there's information about the, how it's made what it's made from materials for example um, there's comparison images maybe comparing it to something another product on the market maybe for example you're comparing a um, Oh, we've got somebody else coming in as well. I'm just going to admit them as well. Got to... Hi, Darren. We're just uh, recording it now. We're going to do a little um, introduction, but nice to, nice to meet you again. Hello, Darren. All right. So we're also uh, looking really at different images like um, a benefits image. So what kind of benefits the product can give you? So, for example, you've got, I don't know, um, bamboo toothbrushes. The benefits could be that you get your teeth extra white. Uh, maybe it's less impact on the environment. Um, it's recyclable. It's biodegradable. So you're really selling the, the benefits of the of the of the product. So he does talk about. I think he talked about it in module seven about improving your um, sort of listing and how to improve the images. And he has got some really good other um, little webinars in the training session, training part of, of um, the import experts area as well. So I recommend you check them out as well, because this is kind of really, really important, getting your listing and getting your images right. Now, first of all, what I normally do, I've got this, you should be able to see the screen, everybody. Um, I've got the sheet screen shared here. I think, uh, Darren, you can see that okay? Yeah. Brilliant. So what I normally do is, is I go into, um, say for example, we're using Alibaba.com and I'm selling, I'm going to be selling a drinks bottle and the drinks bottle looks like this. Hopefully, I think nine times out of ten, you can get some really, really fantastic photographs off of the place you're buying from, the supplier. And generally, I think eight, nine times out of ten, I've had to do that. I've had to get the images off there. I haven't had to use a photographer. You can also use um, images, say you've got a product which is quite a, very widely available, you can get images and photographs from other suppliers. Um, as long as they haven't got any brand name on there, or they haven't got anything else that kind of says that it's a, a brand image of somebody else's company, um, you can use their images. And even if you have got that, there's ways of taking that uh, branding off. As long as the product looks like the product you're selling, um, you can use the image. And I often use them from DHgate, 
um, I use from um, alibaba.com um, and get as many images as you can. The better the, photog the, better the photographs, the more uh, things you can do with them really. And what I tend to do is do that in the early stage, I put them into a folder so I can then use them later on. So for example, we're gonna look at some drinks bottles. I'm gonna use a few of those images to create something in Canva. Um, what I often do is I go through, I favorite them, save them into a favorites file, and then I, um, I, I kind of take them off, download them. Um, sometimes they're in a format that you can't always use, so you can right click and open them with uh, an image converter. Um, there's some good free ones out there, like NCH image converter, they can convert them to, uh, from one image to like a PNG or a JPEG image. Um, which can be quite easy to do. Even You can even use the file converter, which I'll show you later on. I think that can do the same thing. So don't be afraid of taking those images because the, the less money you spend, if you're going to spend out on, on private photographers to take lots of images for your product, then it does add, it eats into your profits. But sometimes, sometimes we maybe design products that we haven't got any images of anyway because maybe you're changing it quite considerably and you may need to do the photographs yourself. Maybe get yourself a decent white box from Amazon. You can get off about 15 20, 30 quid and take your own pictures or it might be worth investing in, in getting professionally done um, from uh, like sort of Upwork, um, 99 designs, those sort of things that can take photographs for you and stuff. I think even Sourceful Group do the photographs as well in China. So it might be Mark Liu's company, I think does them as well. Um, I don't know how much he charges. I haven't gone down that road yet, but um, I think he can, he can do them for you. So you've got your image. Um, this here, this is called uh, Remove Image. Dot BG. It's called uh, Remove BG. How to remove the background of an image. Now it's really, really useful. This, for example, I've got a little folder here with some images saved. I'm just going to find them. Just bear with me a minute. I had them prepared earlier, but I've actually. Okay. So as you can see here, I've got some images I saved earlier and I'm going to just view them extra large. So I've got some images here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag an image like this one here into this uh, remove background. And it's brilliant. I use this anything. If you've got photog uh, photographs, say you want to put a professional photograph of yourself and you haven't got a decent background, you can put a photograph of yourself take the background away and put it onto something else, like a plain white background or like a business environment, so it can make it look much more professional and cleaner. So you drag the thing over here, you put it into upload image, it will do its magic. As you see, look, it takes the background away, so you've got a clean image of your product. It's really useful. If you've got some really good images on, on um, alibaba.com, but you've got lots of logos and other stuff on, and sometimes you get really bad translations of English as well. Like uh, the Chinese people have translated it in, into poor English, which you don't want on your images at all. You can take the background and then you can download it and you can keep it and you can use it on other, other things within uh, Canva. It's also very good as well. If you're creating, um, creating a logo to put onto a product, Say for example, you've got your, um, you're doing a drinks bottle and you want to put on, um, I don't know, uh, Bruno's drinks or something. You can create a design of some kind of uh, writing. You can bring it into here. It will take the background away and then you can just move the writing around and it won't have any background. So it'll just be the writing floating. So you can put the writing onto a product really easily. And uh, it's just a very useful little tool to use and it's free as well. So I recommend you getting that and saving that somewhere. So I'll download that one. Save as. <clears throat> Let's see. All my stuff. I do. I've got a lot of folders. Let's move it over here. Let's see all my stuff. <clears throat> so I'll save it for later on. And then I will uh, will use that in Canva later on. If you've got any questions, just come out and ask. I don't mind. I don't mind being on uh, on the recording. So, so that's a really useful thing. Um, I'll show you a bit more later on. But this one here, if you want to make a note of it, it's called Online Convert free again it's another free app and what this does is when we've got a, a, a png or a jpeg folder a file 
and we've done our Canva bit and we're ready to send over to China, for example, for a label or a logo to put on a product, you can bring it in here and you convert it from JPEG or, or PNG to AI. And you need that. You need a .ai to send over to China because they don't accept um, JPEGs and PNGs usually, I've found. And um, to, to get um, Adobe Illustrator, which is the AI, it can cost can cost quite a bit of money. Sometimes you may have it, one of you may have it, but if you haven't, this is a free way of doing that. And it's really easy to use. You just um, copy the image or the, the um, file over here and start and it just converts it and you get it down here and you just save it and send it over. Sometimes you can't always open the .ai in your computer. I don't know why, it's like a web-based kind of file but the Chinese people with the suppliers can, can open it over there. So I usually upload it to um, this chat box in um, alibaba.com and then they use it over there and they come back to you if you've got any problems. But generally, I've had no issues at all. It's been brilliant, a really useful tool to have and it's free as well, which is good. Any way you can save some money is, is better for our profits, isn't it really? Okay, so we've got um, Canva up here. Now, hopefully some of you maybe had a play around with Canva. Again, there is Canva free, which I'm signed up to. I think I log in with my Google account and you can get Canva premium. Um, I haven't paid for it. Mine's free. I find that everything I'm using within it, what I've been able to do with it, has been fantastic. It's been really brilliant. And um, I have bought the odd photograph because sometimes, for example, I wanted a diverse family unit. And a lot of the free photographs were very kind of like white, middle class, and I wanted a bit more diversity for my products. And I wanted some people with different generations and different um, ethnic backgrounds as well. So I wanted to create a bit more of a, a universal photograph and I couldn't find them in the free photographs. So I bought a few, but that's the only, I spent like, I don't know, it was like 99 pence um, to buy a photograph. But generally there's so much free stuff in here. You don't need to spend out any money really. So you can create really cool yeah. images for like, you know, nothing really. Yeah. Jeff, you know, you know, you know when you first started using Canva, did it take you long to get used to it? No, not really. I mean, it takes a little while, um, but I find it really intuitive, really easy to use. I started using it for my work in my nine to five sort of job. I was making some images for videos and stuff for training, and um, yeah, I mean, it, it takes a while. But I, I wouldn't say what I'm going to show you today is 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 the sort of the stuff I use all the time. And I think if you get your head around it, if you know where things are, I think you'll soon get into it. And it's I mean, for, a free, for a free app, it's one of my favorite things ever. I mean, I'd pay for this, it was that, is that good? Um, it's just easy yeah. to use and it's just intuitive and there's so much free stuff on there and templates and stuff and you can be creative. I mean, if you're a creative person, it's great. If you kind of scratch your and thinking, oh, I'm not really that creative, there are some good templates in here you can use as well. So keep it quite simple. But for Amazon, yeah. I think keep it simple, really. Don't, don't overcomplicate it. Keep it very white, keep it very clear, um, keep it very crisp. Yeah. So there's different areas. I mean, you've got, you've got your main recommendations. You've got your templates up here. Now, I use this quite a bit for my, you know, there's pictures I use on, on mentors or, or Facebook for like sort of um, blogging and stuff. So you've got your social media, your personal, your business, your marketing, your education. I tend to use, I tend to use these two. I use Instagram posts, uh, which is a basic kind of Instagram post you can use anywhere. You can use on Facebook, you can use on um, Twitter, you can use in Mentors anywhere. And Instagram story is just your basic story in Instagram. It gives you much more of a sort of longer, narrow thing, and you can put little videos in there as well. Um, I've also used, you know, at Facebook, at the top of Facebook for your banners at the top, for your products, for your um, product page or your own personal page, you can create uh, really good Facebook covers in here and uh, they can put proper banners that fit ideally into Facebook, but sometimes you create it somewhere else, it doesn't always fit. You've got like uh, the images are wrong or they, they took too big. So you can create things in there. Also, you can create your own business cards. So if you go into like a, a trade fair and you get some cards printed off, they can print them off in here and send them to you in the post. Or if you buy yourself some cards, you've got a decent printer, you can print your own off as well. Um, there's no end of stuff in here. It's just brilliant. It's so, I mean, there's so much stuff. You don't need all of it. I think keep it simple, really simple. I would stick to the Instagram posts, Instagram story, and some Facebook stuff if you need to. Oh, also, I use, if you make any videos for YouTube, you can do YouTube art as well, like the little thumbnails that go on the front of video. You can make them in here as well. Really easy. 
Um, all your designs, I've got my designs in here. So as you can see, my different blog posts and things. I've made some videos for work recently for occupational therapists and stuff. And you've got little, um, little bits of um, video you can change. So with some music on as well. So you can put, for example, this one here. Look, I'll just show you something I made this week for video. So you've got, you can change the colors. You can go in here and you can change the colors, the arrows. So they give you like a template and you can mess around with it and change the colors for yourself. And there's two pages here. So you've got another page in here. If I can find it. There we go. This is the page. And for this one here, I made a little video for training and it had some music with it as well. I just downloaded it, linked it onto the video I was making and you've got like a little introduction then, a really simple introduction. You'll find with Canva, every time you go into a new design, it opens a new tab at the top. So that could be a bit irritating, um, but it does mean as well that you can see what you've done. You can track back as well and have a look at different designs and swap between different pages as well. So you've got your designs in here. And um, for example, you've got, um, this is one I made recently. Let's look at this one here. I'll just deconstruct it a little bit and then we'll make one ourselves with a product. So for example, you've got um, different images of photographs. You can put different ideas in and you can pull photographs around. For example, that there, you can move me around there. You can bring her around. You've got different um, icons and different um, like little things like hands and cars and different icons and things. And you can change the colors as well. So for example, you can go into that, you can change the colors here. For example, that there. Oopsie. And you've got little um, like um, text boxes and you can make them smaller and bigger. And there's just so many things you can do with it. It's just, it's just so easy to use and, and really brilliant. So I'll uh, come out of here and we'll make one. Now for Amazon, Jay said he recommended originally um, pixels of 1,500 times 1,500. Recently, I've heard him say about 2,000. And I wasn't sure if it's too big for Amazon, but I have tried it. So 2,000 pixels by 2,000 pixels. And that gives you a much clearer image because when you go into Amazon and you hover over the image uh, on a phone, for example, or on a laptop, you want the real detail in there. One, uh, I think 1080 times 1080, which is the general Instagram post pictures, doesn't give you that clarity, doesn't give you that, um, that crispness of, um, of, of picture. So I really recommend when you do one. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Darren? You know, you know when we were, we were watching Jay's thing tonight, and he mentioned that guy who did those images on that screen, and he said, did, he said what did you do it on? And he said it was 1500 by 1500. And when you looked at the pictures compared to one of his images, all these other, even though the pictures were great, they were like smaller, weren't they? Yeah. Is that what you're, is that what you're referring to? I know well, the pixels is different. But would yeah, that make I, a difference? Not really. I don't think it does. I don't know what he's done there. I don't know why his images were so small. I've never had that. And I've done it from a bit smaller than 1,500. I don't know if he put the settings in when he, he must have changed the settings when he put them in. So I don't know what's gone on there. He's, and I don't think Jane knew either. So he's obviously, when he's he put the images in, sorry, yeah, Darren. He's something, he said something similar, didn't he, like to do with like doing the, pic, he didn't say pixels, but you know, like scaling it to 2,000, 2000 to yeah. 2,000. Yeah, yes. Because his images are smaller on Amazon. Yeah. But, so you know, I don't, I don't know, because generally what it means when Amazon puts the images in, when you put the images into Amazon, it usually sets the size anyway, even if it's a smaller pixels, say it's 1,000 pixels. They keep, the same, they keep the same image size. So I don't know what he's done. There's some setting there he's pushed or pressed. Something's gone wrong there. I don't think it's the image. I think it's the setting in Amazon that's gone wrong. Because when you put the image in, if you've got uh, lesser pixels, 1,000 by 1,000, you're going to get a much grainier, less detailed image than if you put in a 2,000 by 2,000, you're going to get a much better image in there. What I, I recommend... Is, he, he, used, he used Canva, didn't he, as well? He did, yeah. He used Canva, yeah, he did. Yeah. Yeah, that's what that's what's just that's made me ask the question. Use Canva, it's the same. 
Like, yeah, you, it's a great question, but I don't know. I, I mean, Jay always uses a camera as well, so I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why that's happened. I don't think it's not the norm. It's unusual. I've done. I think, okay. Yeah, I think nine nine listings now, and I never had that problem. I never had it go small like that. So I don't know what he's done there, um, Darren. So right. what you can go in and do, I said the the um, Instagram template. What I recommend here is you do the custom size, do custom size, and you can make it. 2000 by 2000 you put 2000 in there 2000 by there and it'll give you a basic white box but it will give you 2000 by 2000 pixels which is the best one you can have for amazon you can't go beyond that i don't think amazon will allow you i think 2000 by 2000 is the maximum but i've tried it on 2000 and you do get a much clearer sharper image than if you did it much lower so it helps in the, the hovering over the pictures so i'm going to click on that one there So I think this is quite scary. Having a basic white screen and having to start from scratch can be quite scary when you're making images. So what I tend to do is I've got my list here from Jay, the types of images that he gave us. And I use this list for every product. And I make a little list in, in a Word document uh, about which ones I want to do. So it's usually benefits, the hero image, of course, uh, lifestyle image, um, Branding image, comparison image, maybe, and contents, ingredients. So I, I use this list every time. I create maybe, I think it's about eight or nine images are allowed in Amazon. I create eight or nine images for Amazon and make sure that I kind of tell the story of the product. It's really, really useful to have that kind of up on the board. It helps me to sort of focus on what I've got to do. Otherwise, you can get on the route of doing lots and lots of lifestyle images and you forget to do the benefits and the ingredients or the, or the, or the other components of the, of the um, thing. You've got to think as a customer, what do you want to know about your product? What do you want to know about it? What it does, what size is it, what the benefits are. You think about if you're a salesperson, what are you going to tell a customer? What story are you going to tell a customer? So those pictures tell a story about, um, about your product really. So it's giving you a sort of background information. They, they're kind of doing the work for you. They're the salesperson of your product. That's what kind of Jay refers to. Now here, you could put in different, you've got um, here, you've got, you've got your basic box. You've got different um, templates here you can bring in. So for example, you could bring in Door Beach and it'll put that in for you. And then what you can do is you can go in and you can change, you can keep the same sort of fonts and you can change the text to suit yourself. So that, I mean, you could have an, say you were doing, a, I don't know, a, um, an image for a, um, a new product, a label. You could easily just put that in with some details in about what your product's about. You can move this up. You could put in other bits in here. Now, these are the basic templates. You've got loads of free templates. And you'll see free. Sometimes you'll see paid. But you've got so many free ones. And say, for example, you're putting that in, you could change the, the dots. You can move them around, change the colours. It's already the basic is done for you. The, the basic template, the basic foundation of something is done for you. So if you're making a label for a new product, I've used this stuff for making labels for products. And I've used it for making, um, you know, the, uh, the wording to go on products as well. I think keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate it, especially at first. Make it really easy for yourself. Now, Bruno, you've, you've made some product labels, haven't you? Yeah, I made some labels. How did you do that? Did you do it in this sort of thing or did you do it on like a word? Yeah, document? yeah, I did it in Canva. Oh, uh, I just found something like a very, very similar to what I needed. And I struggled, to be honest. Why did you but struggle? Yeah, what, were you, what were you struggling with? Uh, um, I know a designer, let's put it that way. Uh, so knowing like uh, how to combine the colors or mm. what to change, how to make it bigger, how to make it in better the the contrast mm. to make sure like uh, you can read it properly and it stands yes. out and this kind of thing yes yeah. it, it takes time it, it does take time it takes a bit of you've got to be quite clear headed i think when you're making images and labels and stuff and ask people's opinions ask your friends your family ask your kids who may be a very good critical friend um and i think 
leave it for a day and then come back to it and look at it fresh because sometimes you, I'm always tweaking stuff and thinking that's not quite right it doesn't stand out enough and when sometimes if you get them to print it off a label an example label in, in China and put it on the product box and then send a picture of, of it to you you can see actually that works or that doesn't work you may change it at that point as well don't be afraid of doing that and and, and talking to the, the supplier about the evolving process of making a label because it's really important to get it right I think um, and um, I think just yeah, keep tweaking it, keep changing it. And you may do say a hundred products like this and you may tweak the label for next time. I've done that myself and that's okay as well. It's a ever evolving process, isn't it really? So you can change this. And for example, this one here, this is a basic thing I've got off here. You can change the color, pink, green. You can make it bigger, you can move it around. Now, something else that's really useful is over here this is elements now elements are all the little tiny like um logos and things and, and pictures so for example i've used this i use this quite a lot the yin and the yang i use this here is a photograph so you can put this in here make it smaller it's like a, a photo frame so i could put that there put it under here and I can go into photographs. Now photographs, you've got a lot of free photographs in there. You put in what you want. Say you want, uh, I don't know, dog. And you've got lots of free dogs. Some, if you see a little crown or pro, that means you've got to pay for it. But if you really want that image, and you think, oh, that's like a make or break for me, that, that image it is worth buying like 99 pence is minimal amount of money it's quite easy to do just buy and you own the image then you can use that on your own um, your own stuff so for example i want this one I'm making some dog food or something and i've got hello dog food at high school i'm going to bring this dog in bring him across here and you put him into there or this one here's quite a nice dog now if you want it a bit bigger if you double click on it and make it um make it like that you can focus in a bit on the picture see you can make the picture better sometimes make the picture pop a little bit sometimes your photographs your own photographs or these here are a little bit dull so you might make them pop a little bit so what i do is i go up to adjust here and you can change the brightness here just a little bit see the difference there just make it a bit shinier the contrast you can bring in different slight contrast maybe deeper colors saturation you can do maybe the colors being a bit darker a bit lighter blur is quite good if you go a bit blurry it's very good for background images sometimes if you want some writing on an image but the image shouldn't be too sharp you can make it blurrier often works a little bit in this case you want it a bit sharper so you can make it a bit sharper take it forward and bring an image a bit make it a bit sharper so that's really useful there are different filters on photographs i've tried these but these, filter, these filters are so abstract, sometimes I think for Amazon, a bit too abstract, and I, I wouldn't really touch them unless you really had to. Um, I find them a bit too much. So for example, solar, um, whimsical, it does weird stuff. I mean, you may find it's useful, but I just find it a bit too, um, too much really. But you can do stuff. So I recommend doing the adjust, making them pop a little bit, making them a bit brighter, making them sort of stand out. So in like this, you can make them bigger, you can make them smaller, you can move them around, you can put them anywhere. So you're basically making, it's like a little website, you can make your own creation. Really useful. And um, there's loads of other photographs in here. So for example, um, I don't know, um, kitchen. That's kitchen there, that's free one. You can, if you bring it across, you can make it for the whole picture like that, you see. Or you can put another little photo frame in and you can put them just in the frame. So for example, this one here, this is a really nice picture of a kitchen. But again, if I wanted to make it a bit blurrier, so it doesn't stand out so much, it sort of sits in the background, you could do this, like that, you see. You get the idea? So you blur it out, so it goes in the background, but you can see it's a kitchen, but this, the writing is standing out and the dog standing out. So you've got the sort of, the, that this thing comes to, comes to the forefront. Just moving things around a little bit, just playing with things a little bit. This would be very good for a hero image, and uh, not a hero image, a um, lifestyle image. So say you were selling, I don't know, something for the kitchen, utensils, and you wanted your pictures of utensils here, or some writing here about it, 
you could easily have the kits in the background with some writing about some benefits of the utensils and sort of sturdy, made of stainless steel, that kind of thing. Now, going back to this here, this elements, I'll just show you some more of the elements, because the elements are so cool. You've got uh, recently used, so these are the ones I've used recently. You might have seen them on some of my um, things, like pictures of women, butterflies, picture frames, um, trees, frogs, sloth. Little banners, and they're quite useful sometimes, these little white banners to take out some writing. If you've got some writing you didn't want from another picture and you couldn't take it off from remove image, background image, you could put some um, bits of blanks over them. Arrows are very useful, ticks, weights and stuff, crosses, they've got everything in there. These are another little picture frames. Anything like a picture in the background, these are all picture frames. So you can bring them in, a bit too big, make it smaller. And you've got a picture frame. So what I could do then is I could go to photographs and I could put in something else. I don't know, a uh, cat. Again, you've got free images here, some paid ones. Little cat there, look. Bring it along. So bring it along and hover over the frame and just let go and it will go into there. So again, you can go in there, you can adjust, make it a bit brighter. Do something with it if you want to. Contrast, make it pop a little bit. And you can move around, stick her up there. And so you're getting a bit of an image now. You're getting a, a, a picture and you could have um, writing in here. If you want to put some writing in, you've got text here. And you've got lots of different kinds of text. You've got heading text, subheading, and a little bit of body text. Once you've got the text, you can make them bigger and different fonts as well. So you can change them around. Um, they've got lots of different examples here. Again, you've got a lot of free ones here. Quite a fun one, Glow. There we go. So you can put that in there. You can change the color, I think, in this one. Quite a fun looking thing. Look at that, okay, it's looking marvelous now, isn't it? Look at that. I've got Glow, high school, a couple of dogs in a kitchen. God knows what I'm selling, but it's, uh, it's looking good anyway, isn't it? These are I said the, the ones at the top, subheading's good. I use quite a lot of subheadings, so you can put in what you want. Um, kitchen, um, you utensils, move it around. There you go, look. And you can change the text, font, open sans. You can use um, Lovello. You can make it to different sizes. like any other Word document, really, or any other kind of um, document. And you can change the color as well of the writing. So that's the basics kind of sort of the background of what you're doing in terms of different areas. The last one I haven't shown you yet is uploads. Now uploads is where you can upload your own image. So for example, there's pictures of me there. I've got some pictures of the drinks bottle. There's some stuff I've used from a recent, I think, um, I think I did a mentor today, um, pictures there that I've done recently. And you can upload them from um, Unsplash, unsplash.com, if you know that's really, really good free image place. Um, I don't think, I'll just show you actually, because it's so useful. I love un, uh, Upsplash, I think it's called. Upsplash. Unsplash, sorry, there we go. Have you, have, you, have you all used Unsplash? No? It's brilliant, it's fantastic. It's free and you get some fantastic images. So if you're doing a lifestyle image and you haven't got something you want and you don't want to spend some money out, have a look in here first. You've got free images you can download, you can use in adverts and things. So for example, uh, let's do kitchen again. And you get hundreds of hundreds of different images like this. Look at these beautiful images some fantastic images and you can also superimpose your product. So if you've got a picture of a kitchen and say you've got some utensils in there or you've got some saucepans or something, you could, you could superimpose them into the kitchen in Canva. So if you did the, uh, the background remove, just got the plain saucepans, have it as a little file, upload it onto photographs and then you can put it into this and you've got a picture of your saucepans in a kitchen um, to help with a lifestyle image or something. So that's really, really useful. Is this okay for you? I'm not going too fast. Is it all right?
good. Okay. This, good. Is, this is perfect. Oh, good, good. Nice. I love this. I mean, it's brilliant. You just, you just basically, um, you just download it like this. It says give thanks. And do you know, when I first started using it a couple of years ago, I felt really sorry for the people who were taking the photographs. So I was giving thanks to everybody. But um, now I haven't got the time, but I do send them a nice thought because they do these lovely pictures and they don't get any thanks from them. I think oh, I feel a bit bad for it really, but um, so these are brilliant, save them. Now, sometimes if I was using it in a website, I would change the size because the pixels are too big for a website. You don't want heavy images in the website, slows your website up. But for Canva, it's fine because they'll do all that for you. They'll, they'll condense it down and give it to you as a, as a, as a folder. So it's not so bad, but um, that is a beautiful image and you could use it. You could put your saucepans in here. Maybe if you were selling, I don't know, um, vitamins or I don't know, dishcloths, you could put them in there. So you've got that kind of lifestyle image thing going on there. Right, so that's unsplash.com. Brilliant. Free as well. So we've made a bit of an image here. We've got uploads. So I'm going to bring in, say I bring this chap here. Let's put a photogra photograph in. So I'm going to go in here and you can put anything up here. You could put, say you're looking for arrows or photo frames. So, um, oh, these aren't, these are actually photo frames. You want picture frames, I think. I think that's what you put in. Sometimes the language isn't always what you, you want it to be. So you could think, just play around with it a little bit. Uh, you've got to look with picture frames. You've got to look for the ones in the picture in the background. So you can actually put stuff into them. Otherwise it's just a picture frame. Let's go back into frame. Just try it again. There we are. That's what we want. You want these. If you want to put a picture in something, you want one of these. So say, for example, you are doing a um, something technical, a computer or a laptop, um, a mobile phone picture. Bring that in here. OK, and then you're going to go to your uploads. I'm going to put a picture of this man's face into here. There you go. And you've got your own. So you're doing phone cases. And you want a different picture of a, someone attractive in some way, you could put this person's face in here to really sell the image of what you're trying to portray. There you go, you can move them around, you can make him smaller, stick him up there. It could be the dog's phone, and the dog's giving his owner a ring, maybe on the phone. We're trying to create a story here of some kind, aren't we? Bit of a mess here, but you get the idea of what different functions you can use. You've got your uploads, you put your own stuff, you can put your own videos in there as well, and your own audio to make little videos if you wanted to. But for Amazon at this point in time, you probably won't be doing that. Uh, I don't think Amazon allow videos on, for us at the moment in the UK, but I think they are allowing it in the USA. So if you're sending in the USA, you can do, but for the moment, we can't, we can't do it here at the moment. I, don't, I think it'll be coming soon, Anna said. You've got your photographs, which are the free stuff, plus the ones you've got to pay for. You've got, and you put any kind of sort of search up there. You've got your elements, which is all your kind of your little gizmos and your, your little, um, you've got lines, you've got shapes, frames, stickers. Look at these stickers. Hours of fun with this stuff. Charts, grids, gradients, coronavirus stuff as well in there. Foliage, zodiac signs. You've got so many different things in there, but um, it's just useful. Say you, you're doing something to do with um, cosmetics. You could put in some lipsticks or um, hands for nails and stuff. Whatever you've got, you know, you're selling, you could put a little image in there if you wanted to, to help with your um, labels or your design for boxes and things. Also, you can use this, you could use this as well. If you are designing a box, if you're having a box printed, you could do as you could do. I think there are functions in here where you can do designs for boxes or you can make the sides of the boxes and then superimpose them onto the design um, in, a, in a sort of a, um, an image. Um, making kind of app and then send it over to, to your supplier. You've got your text here. There is music. I haven't used the music very much. Um, I don't know why, because mainly I've just, I've been doing images for Amazon or, or blogs and things. I've done a few videos, but usually I did it because I got it free with it, with a, with a free kind of um, template. There's videos in here. Again, I haven't used these yet backgrounds and things but i haven't tended to use this stuff too much the ones i usually use are these here uploads photographs elements text and music okay so let's go back into the beginning again and we'll quickly create an image of some kind for, for an amazon 
and go through it again. If you've got any questions, just jump out and ask me and I'll, I'll show you. So I'm going to create a custom size. I'm going to go 2000 by 2000. I've got a nice plain piece of paper here. I'm going to go to um, my uploads and I'm going to use, um, say, I had one before, didn't I, where I had the, the background out, so I might use that one. Let's just try that here. So I drag it across, I drag my image across, plonk it into the upload media. There you go. And then bring it into here. Now say this is a hero image, I'm, I'm not saying this would be a hero image, but say it were a hero image, you want it nice and sharp and big and bold, no writing really, you may have a little tiny bit, but they want to see the image on its own. And you want it to pop, so you bring it over here to adjust, make it a bit brighter maybe, the contrast maybe, just to make it wow, sort of stand out a little bit. There you go. You've got quite a nice image there. I mean, yes, it's not the best because it's, it's all silver, there's no paint on it. But you've got a nice sort of clear, fresh image. And when you download that, because it's 2000 by 2000, it's going to look really smart. If you download it as PNG, as they suggest, PNG is one of the best images you can download um, because it gives you that clarity of image. You just download it there and you save it then. Let's try something else. Let's put uh, let's put this one in here. If you look like this, you've got that, and it will put it into the whole image. Or if you move it around, you can make it smaller and then drag it out. If I'm doing a hero image, I tend to bring it over and sort of just put it in like that. Sometimes you're lucky. Sometimes you have a uh, an image that you haven't got to do anything to, and you just uh, adjust it a little bit, make it sharper, make it clearer, and then put it straight into, into Canva. So this one here, if I didn't want the, the, the um, I can move it around a bit. So look at that there, that's looking quite good now. I'm just moving it around so I haven't got any of the other bits in. Click on there, and there you go. You can move around a little bit like that. That's quite a nice image for something really close up. You've got the detail there. I mean, you wouldn't necessarily want mouth. So what you could do is you could put an element over there that I showed you earlier, or recently used. You could put something over it. Um, you could put a text box over it. Um, you could put something like, um, I tend to use these quite a lot. They're quite useful. The problem with these is a different color, but what you could have is you could have your own banner here of some kind and you could put some text in there. So what you could do is you could put, um, you don't necessarily want that black line around it. So go up here, change it to white, it's gone then. And you could put some text in here, put a subtext. There you go. And I might put it down here. I might put, I don't know. Oops, you want it different color, don't you? So you're gonna change the color to black make it a bit smaller Oopsie. do any of you make um, websites and stuff if you make websites it's kind of very intuitive very similar to website design if you're doing like sort of um, elegant themes sort of um, divvy those sort of things it's very similar sort of thing you sort of you use it like that so it's lots of sort of moving around lots of like making it smaller making it bigger so in there i could put um quality product Let's see. and you've got something like that i mean you can do things with it you can add bits in say you wanted some other bits um it's quite useful something i found recently is if you put in a um something like so you want to focus on something something like this this is quite nice you can make it a bit smaller 
I don't know about orange, so I'm going to get rid of the orange and make it white. And you can, this little arrow here, if you move it like that, you can move it around, you see. And what you could do is, say you wanted to increase a design feature, you wanted to show a design feature up close, you could say, I don't know, maybe you wanted to focus in on the, on the colour or something. We could do something like this. And you could put in the same image, but what you could do is you could maybe, this one here is a better colour. So what you could do is you put it in there and you could just go a bit bigger. So you've got like, I don't know, a marbling effect difference. You want to sort of focus in on something. I mean, yes, here you wouldn't necessarily need to do that because it's quite a good image anyway. But say you had a particular design feature on an image, but you couldn't see it very well on this image. You could then highlight it here, put the other image in it, make it bigger like this. So you really focus in on that image. So you can do things like that. That's quite useful. And again, you can move it around. You can do things with it. Um, it's quite useful as well. Um, what I tend to do as well, I've had things where you've got like um, the audience, the audience of the product. So what you could do is you could have like um, circles. So for example, I'm not sure if I've got anything here, but you could almost have like um, a network like this. This is quite useful. So say you had, um, I don't know, you have to think for um, different generations. You could have um, older people, younger people, teenagers in their pictures to represent people. So for example, photographs, um, uploads. So let's have a look, you've got a more mature person there, a younger person here, and then maybe you've got me in the middle, there you go. So you could use that to represent different people. So there's different ways of representing things. I think what you could do, as Jay was saying earlier, you can go into the bestsellers and look at your competition. Either find that through Jungle Scout or going onto bestsellers on Amazon, looking at what their images look like and, and, and represent that. You know, not, like, not saying rip it off, but you could um, copy elements of it, flavors of it, and then put your own spin on stuff as well to make it much more, um, um, oops, something else is coming in now, one die. The meeting. So you could um, you could do that as well. Um, was there anything else you want me to show you? Anything particularly? Think oh, I want to see that, or how do you do this? Anything else you want to? How, how do you do the measurements? Like uh, you want to put arrows to see, like uh, okay, what is the diameter of the bottle? Um, and oh, okay. Put some... Yes. Okay. I'll get rid of this, and I'll get rid of the get rid of that. Okay, so you want to like the diameter, sort of like an arrow going around there, yeah? Okay, so I'll go to I go to elements and I would do something like um, this, that sort of thing. You could do that. I mean, there's lots of different arrows. I could put in arrows in. In arrows. And you could do something. Uh, I mean, these are paid ones, but generally there's so many free things. You could usually find something free. And don't forget, just because you've got a white arrow there, don't mean to say you can keep a white arrow, you can change it to any color you want and you can make it bigger and smaller and move things around so you're not stuck. That's quite nice, isn't it? That kind of thing. That might work, mightn't it? Yeah, no. Bruno. So you could do something like that and you could maybe move it like this. Not exactly that, but you could, you could do something a bit bigger maybe. And you can make it a bit like that. I mean, Maybe not that one particular, but you get the idea. You can you can use an arrow around it. I think that's maybe not a good representation. But the color you can change the color, um, gray, pink. It's quite vibrant, isn't it? Green. Or you could make it smaller, and maybe if you could do in the mouth of the of the. Maybe not that one exactly, because you need a better one to sort of fit the shape. <clears throat> it may be that you have to buy one. And that's okay, so they're not very expensive. They're only about 99 pence each a pound. But you could find, there's so many arrows here, as you can see there's loads of them, aren't there? If you want to find something that kind of represents what you want, um, kind of look you're going for, really. I mean, look, there's like 10,000 arrows here to choose from. That's got a nice one, isn't it? And it's free. So that might work. 
So I said the circumference of the uh, mouth of the product. There we go. You could do that maybe, bring it a bit smaller. You could do that. I don't know. Depends what kind of look you want to go for, really, Bruno. I may yeah, tend I mean, to do... Sorry? Yeah, I mean, like you, you find the arrow, and then how you can put the text, like I say, you know, five yeah. centimetres. Yes, okay. So what you could do, I mean, you could... I mean, that's not a brilliant arrow, is it? But what you could do is you can put nah, some text in there. You get the idea. I mean, this could take, I mean, one picture, I, I usually find when I do my images, see nine images, I usually take about the first one, maybe a couple of hours, but the others, I'm, you get into your swing a bit. I usually do on a Saturday morning when I'm fresh, get up decent time. But you can spend a couple of hours on each image. But you've got to think, if you're paying a, a proper image person, a um, designer to do this, which is worth it, because sometimes maybe your skills, our skills aren't in that area. But if you really just like design and you're interested in it and you're going to get really good at it, uh, you could, you know, you could, you could save yourself 500 pounds, really, because it can cost anywhere between 200 to 500 pounds for a yeah. designer. I had a call with um, Anna the other day regarding the milestones. And I asked about the pictures, and she said that she will pay someone in Upwork, and it would cost like a ten dollars, twenty dollars. Really? Gosh, that's cheap. You fix the picture, so like a, having a normal background picture, and then make it lifestyle or anything mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. You said like a, in, she get it very cheap. I don't know. Which well, I, I don't know. I mean. Jay said, he said on the, on the, on the webinars and that, he said, you know, you took 200 to 500. So I don't yeah. know. I, I enjoy doing them. So I really, for me, it's one of the processes I actually really enjoy. I love going and designing stuff and being creative. And in the future, I may go, go down and get a designer to do stuff and say, they can do better than me. Um, maybe they can, maybe they can't, I don't know. But sometimes I like to think, okay, I've got an image in my head about what I want the product to look like. And if I've got a designer to work with, Sometimes it's more hassle for me to do that. I'd rather do it myself. Yeah. But if, if you think, actually, I really love the accountancy side or I love the advertising side, but the image side I really hate, you may choose to spend that money in that area. And that's fine. It's up to you, really. But if you really love this sort of stuff, then I think, you know, it's worth playing around with. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I've, got, I've had some good feedback on my images. So it, I think if you enjoy doing it and you're, you're loving the process, then go for it. If you don't love the process and you hate it, then I think maybe maybe go down the image route. I know Anna isn't so confident with the, the image side of it and she doesn't like all the file conversion stuff. So I know she likes to move that side of it off, but she's really good at other stuff. You know, Jay loves this stuff. He uses Canva quite a lot. He likes all that kind of creative um, design and stuff. So he could be an architect. He loves that sort of thing. So see so you want a, a bit of body text in there. So you could put something like that and you could, I don't know, Say it's, I don't know, uh, diameter of, diameter, can't spell diameter, of 30, five centimeters, something like that. Again, you can change the text to what you want. Say I'm gonna go for a different color here because it's quite dark. So you might wanna take it down a bit. You might wanna, not a great color, is it? Let's try that one. Something going to stand out. So that stands out particularly. Much better for white, actually. White might stand out in there. Make it a bit bigger. Okay. To get the idea, that looks professional. I think the arrow is a bit rubbish. I think we need something else with the arrow. But you get the idea. You can do things. To make it look better, um, I'm a bit of a perfectionist as well, so I could spend hours and hours on an arrow. But um, maybe you'd be a bit better than me at that kind of thing. But you know, you get the idea. I think that arrow is really rubbish. It doesn't work, does it? Really? Let's try something else. That was a free one, wasn't it? I mean, in this case, two straight arrows instead of a circular one like that yeah you could do there's loads of arrows here you can choose you know loads of them aren't there so i'm gonna go to the beginning of the arrows i think we spend all evening on this there we go look from there look do that one so 
So you could do something like that. You could make it smaller. Well, quite like that. If I made that white, that might stand out a bit, mightn't it? That's quite nice. And move the, move the diameter up. So that's quite, that looks a bit more professional, doesn't it? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. I and mean, I think, yeah, get, get ideas from Amazon. Look around our other places, even like companies. So that's not too bad, is it? You can just, you can see all, all of a sudden it looks a bit more professional. Keep it simple. Keep it clear. That looks okay, I think, doesn't it? That's better yeah, than, than having that circle thing. Um, but, it's, you know, you could put a logo. Say you wanted your logo. So what you could do is you could do your logo somewhere else in that word, put it into uh, remove, take the background out, go back into Canva. Whoopsie. I don't do that, do I? Let's go down there. And you could put your logo on here. So say Bruno's drinks, put it there. Um, you could do, actually, you could do that. If you put that there, look. If you put made it into white, you could do it straight on there, actually, couldn't you? You know, Brenda's put. You could make it a bit more different signs. You could do that. So you've got uh, your your logo because Amazon to be branded, Amazon like to see your products with uh, your name on it. You know, that the product of the product name. So they want to see that as well. Was there anything else you want to see for specifically? Anything you're sort of thinking? Oh, I want to know how you do that, or or how do you do this? Any any questions from Gina or Bruno or, or Darren at all? Anything you want to ask? Um, I have one question. Yes. Yeah, sure. When you actually do the label, um, do they have any kind of requirements? What the label size should be, or what the image pixels should be when it's a label, but not a image for Amazon? Um, images for Amazon, I think they've got in terms of general stuff is like no nudity, no obscene words, that kind of stuff, and don't rip off other people's products. I think they seem quite sort of that, those sort of things. In terms of labeling myself, I've kept it, I think where it's made from, so made in China is quite important. It has to be somewhere on your box or your product. Where is the product of origin? What I have been doing, what I've been doing is, you know, the FNS, F, FNC, FNS UK labels. I've gone into um, PDF and I've converted those labels into a, like um, image document and I've put on there made in China and put them on every single label, which helps your box. You can have it, put it on the box anyway, but generally when I'm making a label, I put on the bottom made in China. Depends what kind of product you're doing really, Gina. If you're doing stuff with um, like, I think kids toys and things, you've got to have the uh, European certificates on them, so sort of registered and stuff. Um, any certification you need in the particular country you're selling in, um, any sort of, you know, CE certificates, safety certificates, that kind of thing. But generally, keep it quite simple. I think, say what the product name is, description of the product, where it's made. Um, you may put the um, ingredients or the, all the um, manufacturer's kind of um, materials and things. I put that sort of stuff in there. Um, I keep it quite simple. I keep my labels really simple. Um, don't overcomplicate it. Sometimes I put like a, a thank you card. I have a thank you card in each product. So thanks for purchasing. Thank you for your order. Um, I put like, uh, we're a family run business. Uh, reviews really help our, our business. Um, please leave a review if you're happy with the product sort of thing, you know, that kind of thing. And sometimes I put like, um, if, the, if the product were complicated, I put like an instruction leaflet in there about how to use it. So you can put more detail in the box itself rather than have everything on the label of the product. Sometimes the product box is quite small. I've got boxes which are quite small and you can't put everything on there. Um, in terms of um, other, other restrictions, I don't think so really. It's more or less those really, I think. Um, yeah, made in China, where it's made is really important. Um, I often put, like, if you've got bags, if you've got bags bigger than, I think it's bigger than a few centimeters, because of suffocation risks, you have to put a label on the bag. So when I first started doing uh, one of my products, I used to bag them up and send them in. I didn't know, I'd never box for them because it was very basic. I used to put my own labels on the products. I put my own FNCK labels on the products and I put it into a gray bag. And I, on the outside, I had to have like a, a um, Amazon give you some words about suffocation risks. And I put that on there as well. Um, it's not a toy. Um, don't leave near baby's cots. Um, they give you some words in. If you if you Google that, um, I'll give you some words about that. Does that answer your question, Gina? 
Perfect, yes. And and we just convert this to this AI file and that's what they need to yeah. put on there. Yeah, so if I just download, I'll show you how to do that. If we download this here, so we've got our, we've got our product here, we've got our image. It's our, um, say it's going to be, I don't know, it's a quality image, it's an instruction image sort of thing. If we put that up to there. I'm going to download this picture. It's instructed, we've got like sort of the diamond, it's a bit of information about the product. And you may have like sort of quality steel or um, non slip surface or those sort of things coming off it. I download it to PNG, download, pairing your design, and they give you little quotes from different people around the history and stuff around the world. Give that one. Should open up somewhere. Oh, there it is. Okay, there we go. Got the picture there. I'm gonna save it. Just saving it into my business folder, Canva Ideas. I'll put main image or bottle. Saving it over here. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna convert it to .ai. So back over here. Now, sometimes uh, you may find that this particular uh, free app isn't isn't got the format that you want. Don't be afraid of googling um, file converter and looking at a few of them because sometimes you get ones that are a bit obscure um, outside of JPEG and, and, and PNG that you need to convert to AI. It may not be in here. Um, you can go up to here. Um, I think it's file format. I think it says, and you can choose a list of different file formats. So, for example, PDF. Um, some obscure ones. If you use like Open Office or Libra, the free on, online stuff, you can go to here and you can change them. Um, archive, audio, video, MP3, MP4 to different formats. So there's lots of different formats in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my image and I'm going to convert, I think it was a PNG, wasn't it? So I need to go to file format PNG. images so for png png there we are click on that one there and it is there we are png so i'm going to convert png to dot ai which is uh, there we are PNG to AI, I'll click that one there. Okay, I'm gonna bring up my file. Just find the right one. That's it there, that's the one there. That's what I've downloaded from Canva. So I'm gonna move that one into here. Let's see, it hasn't done it, has it? Wait there a minute. So move that one into there. Okay, convert. It should be here somewhere. There we are. There it is. So you've got main bottle. And it's got dot AI and over after it, and that is your AI file, which you can then send to the supplier. To print. I mean, you won't need it for the Amazon stuff, of course, but you may need it for labels and for product design and for um, logos for your products. Anything you send over to the supplier in China, generally, nine times out of ten, will need to be in a .ai format. Unless you've got Adobe Illustrator, um, which could cost you, I think I looked into it, it was like sort of £30 a month or something. It was quite expensive. I didn't have it, so I didn't need it. So I was doing everything else in, in Canva and stuff in the free... Um, different other um, Illustrator sort of imagey stuff, apps you get. Um, but this is brilliant because it saves you lots of money. Just download it. Yeah, just to add, you, just add something about the um, formatting. I didn't know how to convert into the AI. So eventually, uh, they accepted PDF. Oh. So I could send it in PDF and they say, well, the quality is not going to be that sharp. Yes. But it's still okay for a label to be printed yeah i mean if you don't put your first one that's fine bruno it's all right i think if they've yeah, accepted yeah, I mean, it done, so. <laughs> yeah i mean you've done your first it's, it's on this way now i think it's fine but going forward if you want to really sharpen up your images for yeah, a label or whatever yeah. you, you can do this and they seem to like it 
Um, I, I've had suppliers, I've sent over PDFs or PNGs and they, they can't open it. But I don't know why. It's something to do with their software they're using for printing off yeah. labels and things. Um, and this is basically what they take and they can print this on your box in, let's say, what maybe you have to send them an information how you want to look the box, like if the yeah. image should be big on the box or just on the top. Or, yeah. mm -hmm. But they they kind of okay with this, right? Yeah. You're, you're quite right, Gina. They are very specific. You have to give them instructions about how big you want the label because otherwise – if you don't say, I want the label this size on the box, what I tend to do is get them to do a copy, a mock-up. I've done a mock-up. What I've done is I've printed off my labels, stuck it on a box that's the right size that they're doing. But sometimes when they send the sample over, I get them sent over the sample in a box that I'm going to be using. Um, for a lot of my stuff, I don't use plastic, so I go cardboard and paper for everything. So I get them to mock up the product and I get them to mock up maybe the box and I maybe put a label on that I want and kind of place it on the box, take pictures and send it back over to them in China and say, look, this is what I want it to look like. Can you, look, can you make it look like this, please? And they get the idea. And I might measure the label and say, look, it has to be this size. And you're going to kind of give them really uh, clear instructions because sometimes they, communication can be an issue sometimes, can't it, between two different languages. So, yeah, you're quite right to be very specific, Gina. Absolutely. And um, what is the way to do yourself the labels? Let's say they will send you the product in just a normal cardboard box or any paper box. And then um, can you do the labels yourself and just stick it on the top of the box? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Bruno, we had a conversation about that, didn't we, about labeling and stuff. And um, I, I've been looking around at different labels and I, I sent some images over to Bruno, didn't I, about what they could yeah, look like. Yeah, which I share in this room. Yeah. And it was, it was, um, I think a lot of a lot of the trendy stuff these days. My daughter's looking at, it and she's saying, "Oh, that's really cool." A lot of cardboard, plain cardboard boxes with a cool white label with a design on the front is trendy at the moment. Luckily, but I had some designs sent over from China a few weeks ago for something I was doing, and they sent over like this fancy white box where they can print the labels within the box and everything else. And I had a plain, a plain brown one with my sticker on. And I thought, actually, that looks better. It looks more modern, looks more trendier, more kind of the, the image I was going for, more sort of environmentally friendly and more sort of natural. And I asked a few people, they said, yeah, it does look better. It's actually cheaper. The cardboard box is cheaper to have a sticker put on the top. I think it costs like £30 for like 500 stickers to put on, as opposed to like, I think it's going to work out about, oh, it was like sort of 35 pence, 40 pence per unit. And I've saved myself about £200 by doing it the cardboard box way by all means if you want to have the box sent over and you want to put have the stock sent to your house and then you put the stickers on yourself you can do that i think you'd be hard pushed to um to get it as done as cheaply in this country in terms of printing stickers off than you would maybe mm. in china but you've got more mm. control and maybe for your first product you might want to do that and i did it for my first product i i did the stickers on my computer on my laptop on my um printer so i had the first 200 come over first 200 units and I said, I put the stickers on and I put the FNC code on. I put the child suffocation, anti-suffocation thing on the bag. I did everything myself um, because the product came over in a package, which wasn't mine. It was just bought from DH Gate. So it was much more wholesaler. It wasn't, a, it wasn't the gold, it wasn't the Ferrari. It was more like a mini Metro, really. It wasn't great. So, um, but that was my first thing. And I thought, well, you know, I had complete control over it and, I think that's okay as well. I think it's cool. We sold. They're all gone more or less. So I think at the end of the day, if you've got a product in a box in a shop, it's quite different to having a box in a product on Amazon. If you're selling a high-end product like a watch or something, you want a very beautiful package. It's really, really important. But if you're selling sort of lower-end stuff, which maybe doesn't, as long as it arrives protected, um, I think that's okay. Um, and you can improve as you go on. I wanted to use zero plastics and have like a zero carbon neutral impact on, on, on the environment. So I've gone down that route. That's my kind of thing. Um, but um, yeah, I think it's good. You do what you need to do, Gina, really, I think. Perfect. Thank you so much. No, any other questions? Is this okay? Is this what you kind of wanted? Did you want anything else to show you? Or Darren, you got any other questions? Or Bruno? Or... No, that's great. That's great. It's just that I've never seen, I've never really used anything like that. I mean, I've did. I've, Dabbled with Adobe and stuff, you know, um, just this year, you know, because I did a bunch of you know, tutorial things on other me about using like Adobe. But I've um, I've been I've been 
sneakily making a few notes as you've been talking because yeah, okay. uh, I'm forgetting otherwise. Um, but no, it's it's something I'd probably like to play around with. I think unless you're actually messing around with it and playing around with it, I'll probably have more questions then. Mm. I think once I'm, once, once I'm playing, I'll probably, you know, and then, but it looks great. It looks good. And it's free. I think, it's also, <laughs> yeah, it's I, think, I think the thing with software is it isn't, if you need, even if you wanted to pay somebody to do something, unless you've actually tried it yourself, you don't know the questions to ask no. or explain to somebody what you want mm. because you've got no knowledge of it. And sometimes just by being bad at something <laughs> enables you to get something made that's great. Yeah. But you Absolutely. need you need to actually do it yeah. to know what's involved because you don't know what to ask otherwise. And you don't even know what what can or cannot be done. That's why it's great to sit in and listen to like mm. what you've done tonight. Yeah. At least you know you know these things out and so it's been great for me. Thanks. Thank you. And I think it, and that's great. That's a good point actually, Darren. If you're bad at it, it's good. I mean, I've been doing this for a year and a half now maybe two years nearly so that's my experience over two years i started off knowing nothing about it i had no tutorials i think they got some free training within canva you can look at you can look on youtube and stuff but um i wasn't i saw jay's stuff i hadn't done any images for amazon at that point i watched jay's video i thought ah oh, he's doing it it must be okay you know and then um it gives you a bit of confidence think, oh trying different things you you test the boundaries a little bit and you sort of try different things coming in and you different words, different looks, different images and stuff. But yeah, I think just, just play around with it. You know, you might not get it right the first time and you, you know, you go into the next one and you redo your images later on down the line, you make it better and then make it, make it, make it better again. And I think we're all in a learning process, aren't we? It's all a learning curve, really. Yeah, I, think I think that was perfect. Like uh, you covered the uh, hero, back, uh, hero image, but like uh, you removed the background, you put a white background, there you go. You covered the left style, adding these round pictures around the main picture. Mm -hmm. And then the, all these about the measurements and the detail about the product, which is fantastic. Amazing. Thank you, Jeff. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, anytime. Brilliant. Uh, Please um, I just, I just, sorry, Jeff, I just wanted to say I find this incredible how you find um, all these great things. And I really thank you for that, for putting this together, because when I started, I was really worried that all this is super expensive. I was like, how am I going to pay to someone to do these images? And now when you were showing it, I was like, wow, this is all free. You get these pictures free from these great photographers and you use them and change them the way you want. It's really thank you for that. Like, this is super really great no, thank you for that i think you spend the money where you need to spend the money uh, you know like i've got an account at the moment but i'm not spending much with him you know you, you need an accountant sometimes unless you're really good at numbers i'm not particularly you may need some help with um some other bits i don't know um help with packaging or whatever spend it where you need to but every i mean amazon charges enough for fba and they charge enough for the fees you've got courier service you've got everything else on top of it Everything else eats away at your profits. We want to maximize our profits as much as possible. And there's so much free stuff out there. Um, and I think that's kind of my thing. Really. I don't spend it unless you have to, really. Okay. Dancing beat.